foremost, you know, Tatanka Ohitika, who is one of the people who put the medicine in this ground, who had the Sundance down here. And he was at the White Stone Massacre. And um, my great-grandfather, Claudius Brable, who fought the wars at the beginning of the reservation days. My grandfather, John Brable, who was World War I Lakota code talker. My uncle, John Brable, uh, World War II. My father, Korean War. My brother, Vietnam. And all of my cousins in Desert Storm and all the um, current occupations that we have. So we have always been warriors and we've always been veterans. So I'm honored for each veteran that has come to stand with us, to come help defend, to come help clean, and to come help heal with this land. So right before uh, that started, uh, Ladonis uh, said that BIA, uh, talked to her this morning and ordered her off her own land. Uh, you heard that right. Uh, BIA met with LaDonna and told her that she was getting an eviction notice to leave her own land along with the other people at camp. So, stunning to hear once again the government telling native people to leave their land it's shameful send your prayers send your okay Ready? yep okay the, the whole part about the land being held in common means that nobody owns a particular <laughs> spot on this land they all own the whole mass as a whole and in order to change that situation, you have to go to the Bureau of Indian Affairs and ask for a, a fee patent and a divided interest. Then the Bureau of Indian Affairs takes a, picks a spot, one third of your interest. If there's three people like her sister and her brother, they have undivided interest. So that means they, they basically all are owners of the whole. And the tribe actually has nothing to say over that land other than you know the enforcement of its laws and that sort of thing because it's considered private property at that point and at that point um we have fourth amendment rights in place you know individually and as property and the tribe seems to think that they have the authority to just usurp those rights from people by ordering people out who this this camp Sacred Stone is a 501c3 federally recognized nonprofit organization. That would be like telling the Red Cross to get up and leave. People, white people, black people, anybody can come and go. The Supreme Court has established that rule too, that everybody has the right to pass and repass undaunted by arbitrary statutes that chill the assertion of constitutional rights to pass and repass as a citizen interstate. So the tribe, I mean, the, the whole order is just a facade. It's, it's a blank uh, threat trying to get people out of here because everybody's salivating for this uh, pipeline money. And that's what it appears. I wouldn't be a bit surprised some of the tribal people have interest in this themselves. So I, I, you know, I can't say, but that's my take on the whole thing. They have no authority. They have no just subject matter jurisdiction over members of, non-members of this tribe. It's been well established in federal court decisions. So that's about all I have to do on this case. So thank you. Have all a right. good day. If the governor orders an immediate evacuation, which this governor did, Governor Bergen, that is the same thing that his predecessor did, Governor Dalrymple. He also ordered an immediate evacuation, but he doesn't have the authority to come with the force of law and under the color of law and of state authority to come and physically evacuate the site. The United States Army Corps of Engineers possesses that authority and they must call upon North Dakota law enforcement, North Dakota National Guard for assistance. They have not done that. And we're about, we're trying to negotiate 
that breaking point because there are a lot of people here who have made this their home. And we want to respect the spirit and the energy and the life that they've given to this sacred land. So we'll, we'll, we'll go find out more. Chase, last question. You also just uh, mentioned that... Clean water. So, of their ancestors, without which we wouldn't even have a modicum of any self-government authority or any dignity for that matter. Uh, the Six Nations? The Standing Rock Nation, Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe, uh, the Oglala Lakota Nation, the Sichangu people, the Rosebud Sioux Tribe, Lower Brule Sioux Tribe, and the Yankton Sioux Tribe. Not That's to say nothing of the, of the Northern Cheyenne and the Northern Arapaho who, who also signed the treaty. But those six Sioux Nations, if we can call them that, they are descendants of the signatories of the 1868 treaty that are... Thank you.